Toyota Wideband Air Fuel Ratio Control. In keeping with our procedures, we're going to tell you when you need to use this. Use this program when you need to know the operating principles of the Toyota Wideband Air Fuel Sensor and study the procedures needed to diagnose this system. Now the tools we're going to have to use this time is going to be an enhanced scan tool. It's needed to view the AFR voltages for this unique system that is only available in scan data. This AFR implementation is slightly different than most other manufacturers. That's why we have it standing alone. We're going to start our wideband oxygen sensor with talking about, in better understanding, the narrow band, also known as the NERTS cell. The air fuel ratio is shown across the bottom. We're going from 14.3 to 15.1. The point here in the middle we're pointing to is the ideal balance between air and fuel. That is 14.7 to 1. If you want to be really nitpicky on research grade gasoline, it's 14.67. If you look to the right, you see we go to 0.45 volts. But let's look at some of the other aspects of this. The maximum voltage when we're full rich. The voltage on the narrow band goes high when we're rich. The high voltage indication at full rich has got to be a minimum of 0.85 volts. It should range anywhere between 0.85 in 1.2. Less than 0.85 is a bad oxygen sensor. The maximum rich indication is 14.4. This 14.4 may show up at 0.85, 1 volt, 0.9, wherever it is in there depending on the responsiveness of the oxygen sensor. But it's going to flatline. Going richer results in no increase in voltage. And because of this, on narrow band cells when we go wide open throttle, we have to go open loop. We can no longer feed back fuel delivery for corrections. We purely calculate fuel delivery off of the engine parameters we use for the first calculation, for fuel control. Now we understand fuel control is a calculation. Understand that anything beyond 14.4 on air fuel ratio is a calculation. It assumes normal fuel delivery. That is a limitation of this system. On the lean side, we have a similar situation. The minimum lean voltage is 0.1 volt. It is The maximum lean indication is 14.9 to 1. This signal should range from anywhere from 0.1 down to a few millivolts, depending on the vehicle, how many millivolts. Some run as 20, 30 millivolts is still acceptable going negative. Negative over 30 or 40 millivolts is excessive and causes problems and even 20 will cause problems on some cars. So watch for the two extremes. In our narrow band we're going to operate at a minimum 0.85 to 1 volt. We have a limitation here in that it can't cover a very wide operating range. The range is 14.4 to 14.9. What we need to do is to look at what's happening on power and various other gases over the total operating range. To do that, we're going to start talking about our wideband AFR sensor. Is, uh, this particular sensor is a wideband. It doesn't look a lot different than what you're used to seeing in appearance-wise, except you see we've got a lot more pins out there on the connector. It's going to be used for fuel control just like the O2 sensor. However, none of the signals we look at here are going to be exactly like what we expect on a narrow band, even though this is made up partially of narrow band sensors. Here's the way wide band is going to work. It's going to interact with a PCM. That sounds a little strange. We'll have to explain it to you. What we're trying to tell you is the narrow band was purely passive. We had a voltage output versus current flow. Here, we're going to interact with a PCM it's going to come back and change things. This sensor is going to sample the exhaust gas. Not all, doesn't look at all of it, it looks at a small sample. And it has a reference signal generated from this sample. The PCM is then going to change current flow to the sensor in proportion to the AFR measured in the exhaust. And it's going to use this small sample chamber to do that. The current changes 
made to the sensor determines what the PCM will do for fuel control. It's going to be using these current changes as an indication of the air fuel ratio in the main exhaust flow. Then it's going to correct it with long term, short term, just like we did with the O2. Now we have to say this because it's very easy to get lost once we leave this spot. So let's take it a piece at a time and go relatively slow.